five quarterbacks taken in the top 10. And then this draft tied the record for quarterbacks taken in the first overall with absolutely uh, incredible choices of six of them. And that happened, guys, within the first 12 picks. So no surprise, right? Caleb, Jaden, Drake, May, one, two, three. We said it on the show. That's probably how it would shake out, and it did. And then things got a little uh, topsy-turvy. We thought we might see teams trade up for J.J. McCarthy. I never did. Or maybe the Giants would take him at six. Neither of those happened. Penix goes at eight. Blank stare there for me. I don't know what to make of that. And the Vikings trade up uh, one spot to then to grab JJ at 10. Broncos grab their man, the husband of one Izzy Smoke, greatest name ever, uh, likened to Mahomes already by his coach, Sean Payton. Don't like the pressure there, but whatever. Um, Bo Nix goes at 12. So here are the things that I want to talk about before we welcome in Luke Keekley and Brennan and Sam um, and all those, uh, our, our amazing guests who are kind enough to join us. And it is what, it's got to be a little bit of a haze this morning. You wake up and, you know, did I have some tequila at dinner last night? Sure. But did I think that, you know, uh, Kirk Cousins would be having such a tough morning? No, I did not think that would happen. I did think, and I said, I said it was one of my predictions yesterday, Drake May is going to be a Patriot. It just fits. They liked him in the building. I, things I was hearing, things, it made sense. It wasn't like the craziest call ever. He's in New England. I like the move. Um, but first, let's listen to what he had to say about what makes him, why he thinks he's the most pro-ready quarterback in this draft. Yeah, I think um, basically just my my competitiveness and and want to win. I think uh, I played in you know two different systems, um, so I know what it's like. I played in the air raid my first year and played in this last year with outside zone scheme and and different reasons you know in the passing game. Um, so I feel like I, I've seen a lot in, in college. Um, I think I've, I've they've they've, th they've tried to throw all they can at me defensively. Um, so I've seen a lot of different coverages, um, cover zero, you know, a bunch of it, and I think they're just trying to. You know, get me off my game and uh, I think you know the best thing for me is you know my my skill set and my prototype you know I'm a big six five dude that can stand in the pocket and make throws and also I can go outside and make plays so I really I think you know what makes me most pro ready is that you know I feel like I can do it all and there's not really a weakness to my game the question is is New England pro ready are they ready to go I don't right now love the playmakers. He's walking into a tough situation. Let's call it what it is, right? I don't love it for him yet, but I do love that he is the ultimate pro, I think, to learn from a guy who learned from Brady and osmosis and has been um, in a lot of locker rooms and Jacoby Brissett. And it sounds like he's going to get to sit and learn behind him for a while, which I love. I think this Patriot regime knows um, it's not all going to happen for them right away. It is a process, maybe even a long one. I hope they have more patience with Drake. I hope fans have patience with Drake. They seem excited um, and, and let him continue to develop, let them surround him with pieces. And I really hope they get to work on adding some playmakers around him too, because the free agency with the Patriots was, you know, did not leave a taste in my mouth that got me excited about them until the Bills red wedding to everyone and got rid of people. And then I said, what are the Patriots going to, you know, come, come in second to the Jets, who knows, or Miami. Um, uh, so, so the Drake may think makes sense. I like it. Let's give him some patience. Next, the Vikings crushed round one. Uh, everyone thought they'd have to go all in, right? To move up, you know, to move up to four, to get McCarthy. Quessy, which is never, you know, everybody's, everybody watching has done a fantasy football draft. It's not easy. It's not easy to wait. You overdraft, you overpick, you reach for your guy. The, the, the discipline it takes to stay patient in those moments is wild. Um, and that's what Quessy did. So I give him a lot of credit. And uh, he only had to part with a couple of late round picks to slide up and get his quarterback. Here is Quessy on how his connection with Jim Harbaugh from their time together uh, up in San Francisco sort of factored into the JJ pick. It's kind of fascinating. That guy knows leadership and he knows passion and having been around him. Um, and, you know, he I know what he looks for in a quarterback, and I'm not surprised that him and J.J. had such a connection and, and just the positivity that he brings, the culture, all those different things. And then but from a talent standpoint, I remember when, you know, he used to talk about how much he loved Colin and just different things about his skill set and why he liked him and different things like that. So not a surprise. And just the conversation we've had were great. And just a lot of people speak highly of him. You walk in those, those hallways there. Um, there's not a person that's not a, a big fan of JJ McCarthy. That's high praise. And this is the, the anti, this is the antithesis of Drake May situation in with the Patriots, right? No, no weapons you're excited about. And then Minnesota, how could you not be excited if you're JJ? You have Justin Jefferson. You have Jordan Addison there for you. They're playing in a high tempo, let's freaking go, Kevin O'Connell offense, which is, of course, 
an offshoot of Shanahan and McVeigh and all of that. It's so quarterback friendly. Like JJ might have slid, might have knock on. Like, is he going to be in the situation? He's definitely the the pick to have early success uh, as far as these rookie quarterbacks are concerned. And because the Vikings were patient and they didn't make this big leap up into the top five for him, they got to hold on to the 23rd pick, which is incredible. And they got Dallas Turner out of Alabama, a nice edge. They trade up to 17 to grab him. A lot of people had him ranked, right? as the top pass rusher in the draft. So uh, I think everyone's fairly saying the Vikings really, you know, slam dunk, ran away with it here. Um, I was skeptical about the Vikings plan after Cousins. I'm always questioning them about who are you, an identity crisis? Or do you even understand what a window is? Um, letting Hunter walk, all of that. But I thought they did a phenomenal job there. So credit to the Vikings. Um, I know you guys want to get into Atlanta and I know everybody wants to get into um, all the other big stories, but these are just my little shout outs from, from last night. I'm going to let I'm gonna let Luke handle the, the Xavier Warriors worthy of it all to be honest i did think i'd give uh just a moment for the broncos here um i didn't love the idea of them trading up because there's too many holes to fill in fact it was more popular for my thought process to trade back and just try to get as much as you can i was happy to see it play out so it could just stay put and get a quarterback that i know the coach feels great about because he was not willing to sacrifice anything unless he fell in love at the draft at Super Bowl. I said, are you looking to fall in love? I'm looking to fall in love with the quarterback. And this is this guy. And did we manifest it on the show? Of course we did. Here's Bo Nix uh, listening and reacting to me saying, I want Sean Payton to draft you. I hope Sean Payton takes you. I heard that a lot, you know? Yeah. What do you, what do you think when you hear that? It'd be an honor, you know, like Drew Brees, uh, he got to play for him and mm -hmm. they uh, won a Super Bowl and had great success and, um, you know, led, led the league in a lot of statistical categories and um, had a lot of uh, really good seasons. So um, I'm never going to, uh, you know, argue if I get to play for one of the better coaches of all time and then never going to argue when I get to play with a coach with that much experience. He is accurate. He's a good decision maker. He is getting the comps to Drew Brees. He's a taller Drew Brees. Okay. He came out of his shell. If you watch the game and I don't love the college ball, but I obviously pay attention a lot more in the draft process. Like he makes the move to Oregon, babies, babysitting the coach's kids, taking them to basketball. Like he's a responsible, mature uh, adult pro ready intelligent. I think Sean Payton needs a smart, a really smart cookie. I think he needs a very intelligent quarterback, but at Oregon, 4,500 yards, 51 total touchdowns, just three interceptions last year. That's crazy. People might think he was overdrafted or was going to be overdrafted. The Broncos should have traded up and gotten someone quote unquote better. Um, this had to be the guy they fell in love with that they wanted to go get, or they wouldn't have taken him. Um, but now it's the responsibility of the front office, right? To use the picks they save by not trading up to get the rest of this roster where it needs to be because there's there's a scary amount of work to be done there. But I'm meet, in meeting Bonix, he's, he was everything and more. He was a tall Drew Brees uh, and congrats to Broncos fans on that. Last but not least, my winner of the first round um, is of course the team that I only talked about yesterday as the only team that matters in this first round of the draft and it's the Bears because they deserved it. They've paid the price uh, for what it takes to be this number one overall pick and have the entire culture changed. And Caleb Williams, uh, you know, what what he could mean to this city, right? What an incredible moment to see it all come to fruition there with Roger Goodell. Um, and now he's officially a bear and we got to hear his thoughts on the team. And he was very, it, you know, and Carmen Vitale was smiling ear to ear, I'm sure somewhere writing for Fox Sports or appearing on some broadcast uh, because she understands the city of Chicago. And if you listen to him talk here, you know that he also does. I believe the culture that we've been building um, I would say the culture, the coaches, um, cause that's where it stems from. Um, um, and then I'd also say that the love and support that the fans have been giving, um, they're ready, they're hungry, uh, they're all excited. And so are we. So Caleb also said that in his meeting with Chicago, Bears Brass told him that they haven't always put people in the right position and that's their fault. I love the accountability. They said the plan is to change that around. And it is. They put their money where their mouth is. I said, stay aggressive. Cajones 5,000. Like, let's go. And then they snag Washington receiver Roma Dunze at nine, which we love. They didn't have, the whole thing like we have to get, like they didn't have to do squat. They didn't have to do that. They could have traded down. They could have said, we had DJ, we have DJ, a perennial thousand yard receiver, Luke Lee Keekley, 
loves him. I'll talk about him here in a minute. Um, Keenan Allen, we we got the, the route runner, the savvy vet. Let's go defense. But no, let's stop Jordan Lund. No, they went and got Caleb another absolute star to throw to in Rome. And if you didn't see it, um, check out the quarterback's reaction to the pick of the guy who he was on the flight with to Detroit. We got our guy. We got our guy. Who's your guy? Uno. Uno. Okay. Are you Uno. ready for some good vibes? Let's do it. We're all good vibes. In yeah, we're great vibes today. Chicago has one of the best collection of playmakers in the NFL. You can't tell me they don't. When is the last time we could genuinely say that? Let's think about this. Let's look at this uh, this offense. Caleb, DJ, Rome, Keenan, Swift, Kmet, Ryan Pohl, stay aggressive, put pieces together. They didn't trade up and still managed to do it with the Rome pick. I love this first round for Chicago and hope they're enjoying it. Okay, speaking of... DJ Moore, former teammate, of course, of Luke Keekly. Luke Keekly, brilliant mind. I'm done talking.